Okay, hello everybody. Today we are chatting with Rebecca Hill from Green & Co Real Estate. Uh, Becky is the owner of this real estate agency specializing in acreage and properties in the western suburbs. Um, Becky, you've been working in real estate for um, a little while now, starting off in the UK. Um, do you want to tell us about your career so far and how you ended up over here? Okay, um, yeah, over 25 years, which is scary. Um, that, that all amounted really quickly. Started off um, in the UK as a negotiator, which is what most people do over there. Very different setup over here. Most people work for themselves um, or are contracted. Um, so when I came over here, I came with my son, who was only five at the time. Um, so property management was the way to go for me then. Um, and then I've just recently gone back into sales. But the bulk of my Australian experience has been in property management um, and rentals. And it, it differs, I guess, over here because in the UK, certainly when I worked in lettings over there, you didn't get that many um, people actually asking you to manage, whereas property management here is really common. So if you're coming over here and you're renting, you're going to have a lot more dealings with a property manager and very few dealings with the actual owner um, because most people have their, their properties managed as opposed to dealing with people direct. Yeah, yeah, I've even found, um, I think I had one property that was managed by the owner, but even then the sort of viewings in the open home were done by a property manager that was yeah. sent to vet vet the tenants. Um, yeah. When you first moved over, did you rent first of all? We did, yes. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't use a relocation agent and we really should have done. Um, we came over and first off lived in a kind of caravan <laughs> basically for the first week thinking we'll find jobs and we'll we'll be all settled a week should should cover it um we then moved into an apartment on the gold coast for a month and then we did nearly three weeks up in Calabria. so a lot of moving in and out um of places because it did take a little bit longer than we'd anticipated and because we had absolutely no clue what we were doing and no help so um i i didn't come the way that i would now recommend people <laughs> do it yeah were you on the gold coast and calandra because you were thinking about living there or were you just wanting to have that sort of holiday no um there's more furnished property there because our stuff obviously was coming by sea um and was going to take at least three to six months to come all the way over so we needed to find something furnished initially and furnished in brisbane itself is really hard to get and very expensive because it tends to be right in the cbd um hotels obviously extremely expensive so it has to be either airbnb um and we just found that if you went to gold coast or caloundra because they're holiday places there's far more um furnished accommodation so it, it worked out a little bit cheaper for us right and then you were just driving into the city to look for properties um, yes and... yes um which again wasn't ideal <laughs> And having rented um, as a as a tenant, and then obviously done it as a property manager, do you feel the rental process has changed at all in that period, or do you feel it was a similar? Um, I think it's probably similar. Um, I have to say that tenants here are not um, treated particularly well. I found as a tenant, I was very much treated as a second class citizen. And, and certainly when I went into property management, I went as far as I could the other way to make sure my tenants felt valued because just because you're renting doesn't mean, you know, there's anything wrong. Um, so, so that was a bit surprising to me, particularly because customer service levels in the UK, when I, I, I was a tenant just before we left the UK, um, and previously, years and years and years before. And I found that we were treated really well by the agents. Um, and then, of course, you never hear anything generally from the landlords until you, you, you know, you're coming towards the end of your tenancy. So it's a very hands off in the UK. It's far more hands on here. Um, and some of the agents, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're not they're not bad. <laughs> um, but on the whole, they're very well, they're they're. they're totally loyal to the landlord um, and acting on their behalf but sometimes that can impact on the customer service side 
so yeah no i agree i think um some of the agents that i've came across don't realize that renters may also be landlords or future future clients Absolutely, um, yeah yeah um or who they know you know and if you've got a good mm-hmm. property manager you'll be talking to your friends and family about that manager rather than moaning about that property manager <laughs> so yeah. I think we both ended up in this industry to to change that perception little by little, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we get, we get a lot of people moving over um, who've came from owning a property and obviously then renting first up when they first get here. So they've got time to get to know the area and obviously house hunt for a house to buy. Um, and going from that owner occupier to being a tenant again is a little bit daunting. Um, and we get a lot of questions around like uh, just around what the process is and what they should be aware of um like inspections and the level of paperwork that's involved um do you have any sort of insight on that like as a property manager what would you have been looking for if you were assessing a tenant application do you know being really honest um i think any business person likes to deal with people that are easy to deal with um, so I, I mean, totally would do credit checks and, um, all of those kind of things that, um, any history, um, but genuinely I find that the people that were easy to deal with, um, you know, pleasant, polite, that kind of thing there, you know, that goes a really long way. Um, I also I mean, the, the other key things are just people that are prepared because even the, I mean, the market's mad at the moment, but when the market wasn't mad, it's still fantastic if somebody comes to an inspection and says, here's my application and they've already got personal reference in there. They've already got, you know, bank statements from the UK. Um, we found that having all of that kind of stuff pre-prepared meant that where, where we were trying to rent was quite competitive, even, you know, five six years ago um and because we had basically all of our ducks in a row and you know we'd go to inspections and say here it is uh we found that we 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 managed to get what we wanted pretty quickly um so that kind of thing they they slightly different here i mentioned credit checks actually they don't do credit checks here um so they'll check you on ticker which is called the naughty tenants register um and otherwise it is basically personal references uh they'll check your income but they don't do it with a you know what we're used to in the uk where they do a proper full-on credit check here it is literally last three pay slips um, if you're coming over and you have a job but you haven't started it, most of the agents will accept a contractor's proof. Um, and again, I rented only for six months before we left the UK and I managed to get a reference from that particular agency, even though it was let only and not fully managed, they gave me a reference knowing that I'd need it when I came over. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, I've sometimes asked people to just provide even a mortgage statement to show that they're regularly paying something, you know, even though they're not paying rent, yeah. they currently are, just something that shows they're good, good pair, they're not in arrears. Yeah, um, yeah, and if they've, I mean, if they've just sold or if they've rented their own property out in the UK, um, that agency will provide proof that they're homeowners or their conveyancing solicitor will provide details to say they've sold, they're liquid, you know, they'll put in writing how much money you put in the bank. Um, and over here, you can't pay six months in advance, but you can pay in three month installments. Um, and again, that can also sometimes be a good way if you're coming without a job to begin with, um, do, you know, prepaying rent is, is a very good way of making sure that you're you know, going to be of interest to those landlords still. Yes, that you've just got that covered if you'd happen to be delayed on getting a job. Yeah. Um, and then once they're in the rental, um, obviously they have to do the um, the move-in inspection report, uh, which yeah. I find is a little bit daunting for some people because it's, um, it's sort of your key to getting your bond back, isn't it? It's Yeah, very much so. Um, and it's really important that not all property managers do them in the same way and it is the tenant's responsibility to double check um, that 
how something's been described is correct. Um, I've seen over the years so many reports where it's just been ticked as all good condition um, and actually that the, the agent hasn't picked up on things that down the line, if you have a change of property manager, you could potentially get blamed for if you didn't make a note of it when you moved in. So yeah, well worth just taking just before the removal list arrive, if you can, just take half an hour, walk around, um, photograph anything that you would consider to be damaged, not wear and tear, um, and just make a note of it on that report. Make sure that goes back to the agent within the three days, and it's three um, actual days, not working days. So if you move it on a Saturday, make sure you drop it back on the Monday. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a key point on the property manager changing as well. I did have a rental once that went through four four property managers in the time that the tenants were in that house. So yeah, yeah, the fourth person, if good notes haven't been kept or good photographs haven't been kept, then they're not going to have a clue what the house, what the state the house was in when you first got it. So having those photographs yeah. and that report very detailed um, it's, it's key, yeah, definitely. Same as you going through any sort of lengthy dispute process with the with the agent. Um, yeah. And then you also get quarterly inspections. I can't remember if that happens in the UK, does that? The UK, it's six monthly, so twice a year if it's fully managed. Um, and yeah, over here, and it comes around so fast. Um, it's, it's good in some ways, because I mean, it, it means you, at, you, know, you spring clean at least four times a year. Um, but it's, it is basically, it's an inspection. The, the uh, property manager will come basically sort of every 13 weeks, it averages out. Um, and they're coming really just to make sure that there isn't anything that perhaps you haven't reported as a tenant that could be, you know, structural damage or, you know, maintenance issue. Um, it's also, it, it is, it's, it sounds really judgy, but it's not kind of seeing how clean you live. But for example, if somebody never hoovers a, a sorry, vacuums a carpet for an entire six month tenancy, you can end up with carpet moth, um, which then is an issue because you'll have to replace all your carpets and have a pest spray and it can get really expensive. So it's, it's stuff like that. So if, um, another example is we're all working from home at the moment. So we're all sitting in our wheelie office chairs got one behind me um, and in a rental property it's really important you put a plastic mat under it because you will be held responsible um, if the carpet gets damaged so a good property manager will just politely say to a tenant would you mind just popping a mat under that and they'll document they've done that so if you don't do it and then you come to the end of the tenancy and the carpet's wrecked you will be responsible so it's little things like that you do get a few property managers that think it's an excuse to go around with i mean i haven't actually seen anybody with white gloves doing the dust thing but you do get people that will say oh they hadn't made their bed and it's like well hang on you're not there to look at whether someone's made their bed or not but i do think if you don't know who's coming around to your property um that you're renting just make that effort put, you know in in your own head think it's your mother-in-law coming to visit and the kind of lengths you go to to impress her and then you'll be fine <laughs> yeah that's um yeah they're definitely not there to check on the cleanliness but as you say if it's never clean in all your checks then you're going to be yeah. probably paying a little bit more attention at the checkout to see how yeah. soon they've managed to get it when they've finally left. But um, it's yeah. also an opportunity for the tenants to raise little minor repairs that maybe need carried out that they haven't previously noted. Because they'll get notified a week or two before the inspection to say somebody's coming, won't they? Yeah, so they have to give seven days notice, but most agents will give at least two weeks. Um, I would say if there's anything, I, I know, you know, not everybody's going to recognise what maintenance is more important, but minor things, fine, leave those to report on a routine inspection. But anything major, if you see a crack in a wall, if you, if there's a slow leak anywhere, um, obviously report that ahead. It's really important because, again, as a tenant, part of the... Um, the tenancy agreement you are signing to say that you will report stuff and that you're responsible if you don't basically so yes, yes. i've personally been stung by that before we had a tradie who broke a window um 
whilst doing some repairs and we never noticed and we got we got stung for it when when we moved out because nobody had noticed it and we couldn't prove that it was them so yeah um, sore sore lesson to learn at the time but yeah you are responsible for that house um yeah and, and taking care of it so that is that i find the um the actual tenants are pretty well looked after in a sense so there's very strict rules about who can access and yeah. when you can access and how i mean you are sort of it's a, what's the terminology about being left to live in peace or something like uh, that quiet enjo- quiet enjoyment quiet enjoyment yeah. yeah so yeah so it's um i think the the tenant is looked after by the legislation and then the property manager sort of looks after the owner although they should look yeah. after both ideally yeah yeah be. i think they should I yeah. also think for owners, the, the better your property manager is at looking after your tenants, the better the entire relationship will be on all sides because a happy tenant generally is really respectful of the property. And um, when it comes to the end and you do have those things that come up on an exit condition report, if the relationship all the way through has been pleasant, happy and good on all sides, it makes negotiating that bit that much easier. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you mentioned the exit condition report so that's just the flip side of the entry condition report isn't it where you just again go through the property and make sure it is as it was when the tenant first moved in really yeah and then then everything's get checked off and then you hopefully get your bond back based on the fact you've looked after yes. it yeah, and that's it in a nutshell, isn't it? That's the whole, I guess, involved. It is. Um, and the tenant, as you said, the tenants are very definitely really well supported here um, from from the law point of view. So uh, as long as you get those key things right, check your entry when you first move in um, and then make sure as far as possible that you're handing the property back as it was handed to you. Um, it's all good. Um, and just be aware of, the difference between damage and wear and tear drawings on the wall is damage um a scarf from furniture is wear and tear so um yeah yeah that's a good way to look at it um oh well thank you very much becky that's been awesome i loved um hearing from you today you've obviously got a wealth of property management and sales knowledge up your sleeve so thank you very much for your time no problem